searching for a killer. For authorities to confidently announce that there is a serial killer in the community, there must be a common theme and evidence linking the circumstances to one another. This is exactly what is currently happening in the city of Stockton. Stockton is in the northern San Joaquin Valley and the 11th largest city in California, as well as home to the state's oldest university, a community that can be described as incredibly diverse, a beautiful melting pot. However, lately, the community has been shook to their core upon hearing about the multiple murders in the area. When the authorities mention the murders being linked to one another, the frightened Stockton neighborhoods hold on to their families a little tighter at night. It began between April 2021 and September of 2022. The first murder that was linked occurred in Oakland on April 10th and is considered to be the perpetrator's very first victim. He was killed on Harmon Avenue at 4.18 a.m. His name was Juan Miguel Vasquez Serrano, 39 years old at the time, and died from gunshot wounds at the scene. The Oakland Police Department was alerted to the shooting by its shot spotter, which is a gunshot audio detection system. But by the time they arrived, the killer had fled. Even though this was considered the first victim, it was not until the Stockton police took over the case and linked it when they realized that Juan Miguel was indeed the first case that had the connecting evidence. Then not long after, on April 16, 2021 at 3.20am, now in Stockton, a 46-year-old black woman who was living at a homeless encampment was inside her tent when she heard someone walking around outside. When she came out of her tent, she was approached by a man holding a gun. The perpetrator fired multiple gunshots and wounded the woman. She defended herself by lunging towards her attacker, and the shooter decided to lower his gun and flee the scene. She survived her injuries. The victim said that there was no exchange of words whatsoever, and described the suspect to be around 5'10 to 6 feet tall, wearing dark colored pants a dark medical mask, and a dark colored jacket. It became quiet for some time. Then, a year later, July 8, 2022, at 12.31 a.m., Paul Alexander Yaw, a 35-year-old homeless man, was gunned down on the north side of Stockton on the 5600 block of Kermit Lane at Stockton's Holiday Park. When the police responded to the scene, they took Paul to the hospital where he died from his injuries. His family stated, He was a good boy who grew into a good man with a big heart. He was a son, brother, father, grandson, nephew, and cousin. Then, just about a month later, August 11th, 2022, at 9.49 p.m., the Stockton Police Department were called to the 4900 block of West Lane. There were reports of a shooting. They arrived at a parking lot of a Popeyes, where they found 43-year-old Salvador DeBuddy Jr., Suffering from gunshot wounds, Salvador was a father, a musician, and graphic designer who had fallen on hard times and was without a home, camping by the Calaveras River. He died from his injuries at the scene. Less than a month later, on August 30th, 2022, at 6.41 a.m., the Stockton police responded to reports from residents worried about a young man. They arrived at an apartment complex in the 800 block of Hammer Lane where they found 21-year-old Jonathan Hernandez Rodriguez shot dead inside of his car. His mother, Viridiana Rodriguez, who called him Johnny, has set up a memorial near the parking spot. His family is now looking to move out of the city, hoping to keep her daughter and the rest of the family safe. 22 days later, September 21st, 2022, at 4.27 a.m., Multiple people called 911 to report gunshots fired in the 4400 block of Manchester Avenue. The police arrived at the scene and found 53-year-old Juan Cruz who was shot on the sidewalk between a car and a fence of an apartment complex. He died from his injuries at the scene. This is the case where a CCTV camera captured the person that is likely the perpetrator walking near the apartment units. 
This footage has now been released to the public, hoping for tips to come in. Less than a week later, September 27th at 1.53 a.m., multiple people reported a shooting around the 900 block of Porter Avenue. When the police arrived, they found 54-year-old Lawrence Lopez Sr. with gunshot wounds, and he passed shortly after. He was a musician who leaves behind six children. So what are the circumstances that link these murders to one another? Well, most of the shootings happened in Stockton within just a four mile radius of one another. The woman who survived and was considered the very first attack in Stockton was located just south of the other five murders, despite the crime occurring about a year earlier. Another connection are the similarities of those being targeted. Five victims out of the seven shootings were Hispanic men, and four of the victims were homeless. But the police do not believe that there is any indication of a hate crime. There was also a pattern of the time frame that the crimes were committed. All accounts happened when it was dark, late at night, and in areas that are badly lit. The victims were also likely all alone and likely caught by surprise. However, these are all circumstantial evidence. The nail in the coffin connecting these instances to one another is a confirmed ballistics test from evidence collected at the crime scenes. Even though police did not say the shootings are linked to the same gun, Stockton Police Chief Stanley McFadden stated during a recent briefing on October 5th that he had no answer as to why the pistol went dormant for over 400 days referring to the time between the second and the third attack. There are currently no suspects, but they are looking into persons of interest, and released a video on October 4th hoping to receive tips on who the attacker could be. A $125,000 cash reward is offered to anyone who can bring information that leads to an arrest in any of the investigations. A tip line was recently opened for people to submit their information. The number is 209-937-8167, or you can email policetips at stocktonca.gov. They are also accepting any video surveillance evidence that can be helpful to the case, which you can send that to stocktonpdca.evidence.com. If you guys have any information regarding this particular suspect, please contact the police. Their information is down below. Thank you guys all for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next upload.